So my apologies, but we want to thank everyone who's tuning in from our Word of Life podcast. Amen. 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 We praise God for you guys for tuning in. Amen. And as I was telling our video broadcast audience that during the time of this recording, we're actually celebrating Mother's Day here in the United States. So we value here you as moms, not only here in the United States, but around the world. Amen. Yeah, amen. And there's some women out there who've never had children, but they have a mother's spirit. And we want to celebrate them uh, who are listening as well. And for those who have gone on, because uh, even though your mother may not no longer be with you, she still lives. Amen. 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 So I want to celebrate that. I want to celebrate my wife. She's been a wonderful mom to our children. I call her our coupon queen. Uh, so she's always finding creative ways to save us money, which that is a Proverbs 28 woman. You know, when you're able to save money. She can cause us to uh, buy a whole household full of food if she could with $5.99 yeah, for coupons. Amen. So I praise God for her. I don't have the anointing to endure the coupon shopping, but I always love the benefits. Amen. So turn to the book of Psalms 23. And when you have it, I want you guys to read it with me. It's called, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will do well in the house of the Lord forever. May the Lord have a blessing to read his word. Amen. I want to thank my father, who's our pastor, for giving me the opportunity to preach the Mother's Day message. Amen. I consider that an honor, so we want to honor our pastor. He's a wonderful pastor, wonderful Amen. dad. Amen. Let's give him a hand clap. Amen. Amen. I was trying to ponder what what kind of message to give the moms, and and I actually had the dream about this message. So I want to speak uh, what I believe God put in my heart to tell you. And it's something you already know, but how many know that even though something you already know, it's good to hear it again. Amen. Because if you have ears to listen, you'll hear something you've never heard before. Amen. So what I love about God's word is it never changes. That's right. We change. Our attitude toward his word will change. And the thing I think he wants to encourage me to tell moms is that he wants to remind the moms, I know that you worry a lot about things. Moms put a lot of pressure on themselves where they want to be the best mother to their kids. And they want to, they want to pray uh, and have the best for their children, even when we mess up. And the Lord wants to remind you that I'm still the shepherd. And I am still your shepherd. And you will not want. Praise the Lord. And what that means is, moms, I will still be your shepherd. And you will never have to lack anything. Crazy. One means you don't have to lack anything. It's another form of prosperity where it'll be nothing missing, nothing broken. So and what's interesting about this, it he says, it's an image of David telling us that the Lord is my shepherd. If you read about this, he's going back to his shepherd days. And this is a this is a passage that all of us heard so many different times, usually during funerals, which is sad. Because you know, you don't need the Lord to be your shepherd when you die. <laughs> Did you know that? You don't need him there because you're with him. Amen. You know, you need him to be your shepherd before you die. Amen. 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 And what's interesting says the Lord, when you translate that right there, it means El Shaddai. Praise the, the Lord. The great almighty God. The God who's bigger than anything you can even imagine. He says, I, the great I am, the God who's more than enough, the God that has everything within me, the one who creates whatever you need, that is your shepherd. Praise the Lord. Now, if you translate that, what it's talking about, the shepherd is someone who, who leads you. He goes ahead of you. So where you have to go, he's already been. Praise the Give Lord. Give God a praise. Amen. Because uh, some places where moms have to go to is scary and it's alone. And God wants you to know, you may not have been here before, but I have. Amen. And if you follow me, you will never lack anything. Praise the Lord. And then it says, the next part, in order for you to lack Nothing. He maketh you to lie down. And that struck me. He maketh. That means he has to make us. 
slow down. Because what I know about moms, it's true about dads too, but I'm talking about moms, is, is that you always want to go full pace. You want to go full pace, do whatever you got to do with your kids. No matter how grown they are, or no matter how little they are, you want, and the Lord wants to slow you down. He said, I'm your shepherd. So another way of looking at it, and I just thought of it just now, is the Lord is your coach. You shall not want. He's your coach. If you know anything about when you go to the gym, the coach makes you do things you don't want to do. He's like, I know what's best for you. So I'm going to make you lie down. What that means is he's going to force you to slow down. And then when you translate, it means stretch you beside the still waters. He's going to make you relax. How do you know that sometimes with the pace of life is going so fast and you're like, I don't know what the next step is going to be. The devil's been attacking here, attacking there. And God's like, I got this. I'm your shepherd. He has this nice still voice. You remember in the book of uh, First Kings, and it talked about how he was talking to Elijah, and he said he heard an earthquake, but God wasn't in the earthquake. He heard a wind, but God wasn't in the wind. All he heard was a still voice. And I feel the noise. I'm telling you, God the Shepherd is a still voice. What he does is. When the storms of life are coming your way and you feel like you're about to lose your mind, he's talking like this. Praise the Lord. As he knows that he, he's talking quiet. Suddenly your ears are burnt in a quiet voice. Praise the Lord. And you won't hear the earthquake anymore. You won't hear the winds. You won't hear the flood. You hear that still voice praise of the master. The Lord. Praise oh, praise God. God. He will make you be quiet. He will use the environment around you to make you quiet, make you still, make you stop running, uh -huh. say, slow down. Because the Bible says, the just shall live by faith. You will walk by faith and not by, he said, I don't want you running anymore. Stop running. Stop doing so much. He's mentioned to me right now, stop doing so much. I am your shepherd. I have already been where you're trying to go. I've already been to the end of your life. And I see that's even greater than what you're going through right now. Praise and I want you to know, if you just slow down and just walk with the master, he will cause you not to go ways where your ancestors have gone if you listen to that still voice. Praise Amen. And it says he leads you beside the still waters. Look at this imagery. He's like, everything's chaotic, but if you follow the master, he will cause tranquility to come in the midst of chaos. Yes, you remember what Pastor Tim was talking about in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Yes. And suddenly there was darkness upon the earth. And even then you saw the Master with the still voice saying, Let there be light. I don't think he shouted. I think he just called out into the dark says, Let there be light. And there was light. God don't have to talk really loud to get what he needs. I notice that a lot of times you hear, you see these parents screaming and hollering at kids. And, and, and the kids just keep moving around. But I, I'm scared of that parent walks into the room and goes, you better be still. Oh, well. And the kids stop crying. I'm like, because they know the voice of authority. Praise the, Lord. the God that you serve has authority. He don't scream and holler at the devil. He says, you be still. And he's, Amen. be still. He don't have to raise his voice to the devil. Uh -huh. And that's what he wants you to know as moms is, he leads you beside still waters. And when he leads you beside the still waters, the Bible says he restores your soul. Now, restore is a very fascinating term. Did y'all know what restore means? It means to re-educate. It means to repay. In other words, he said, I'm going to renew your mind. Uh -huh. I'm going to re-educate you of who you really are. Some moms, have you noticed a lot of moms like to compare themselves with other moms? God is saying, stop comparing yourself with other moms. I've made you who you are. Amen. Don't blame yourself for any mistakes you've made because I'm going to re-educate you every step of the way. I'm going to repay. Restore also means repay. So he's going to re-educate. He's going to repay. He's going to renew your soul. Soul is a very fascinating term if you're taking notes. Soul not only means your spirit, it means your life, it means your mind, it means your emotions, and it means your body. In other Praise words, he's speaking to the threefold man Praise of who you are. 
The God that you serve is so majestic and so powerful that he won't just restore your finances. He will restore your psyche. That's what soul means. He will restore your mind. He will restore your emotions. Because what he's saying is if you will recognize that I am the shepherd, no matter what happens in the economy, you still have a sound mind. No matter what happens in your neighborhood when there's violence breaking out, you still have a sound mind. When you're looking around and everyone else's kids are dying and they're making all these mistakes, you still have a sound mind because you recognize your shepherd is ahead of you. Give God a praise. Amen. And notice it says he restores. He doesn't do it one time. He does it continuously. So what he's saying is, all the days of your life, if you recognize that I'm your shepherd, I'll keep renewing your mind. The woman that you are today is not the same woman that you were just were five years ago. Look at how far God, God brought you from. Amen. The mom that you were 20, 30, 40, or even six months ago, you're not the same mom Praise because he's still renewing your mind. Praise he's Lord. still restoring your soul. And what happens is when he starts renewing your mind, then it says he leadeth you. Leadeth is a fascinating term. It's a form where he, he shows you the way. He, he guides you. How many know that sometimes, you know, the, what he asks you to do, you think, I can't do that. I don't have the education to do this. I don't have the strength to do it. So what the Holy Ghost will do is he will pull you. Amen. Real gently and just nudge you. Leadeth means it's an action of he pulls your hand and he... Mm -hmm. He tugs you along. And as he tugs you along, the Bible says he leads you in the path. Not the path. The path. Everybody say the path. The path. If I be religious, the path, the path, the path, the path of righteousness. God's way of doing what he does. God's saying, I don't have one path of goodness and mercy. Well, I have multiple paths of Lord. righteousness. Because how many know as moms, you're multitasking? Even when your kids are grown, I, I got the revelation when I became a parent. So, Mom, Dad, now that I have kids, they're my kids for life. This is a life sentence. And even when I close my eyes and go to heaven, they're still my kids. Because how many know that even when you get to heaven, if you live a long life, you're going to still think about your kids. Uh -huh. And even then, the shepherd will lead you in the paths of righteousness to remind you that I'm still the shepherd. I am the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And so what happened was, he does it for his name's sake. And then it says, fourth verse, yes, though I walk. Notice this imagery. Notice God's not running. How many knows you don't see God running too often in the Bible? The only time you see him run is when he's rescuing people from sin. That's the only image you see. Other than that, he's walking. God's pacing himself. God's like, why are you in a rush? You know, every time you saw Jesus in, in the New Testament, he was always walking. And what was interesting was he was being led by, even though he was a shepherd himself, he humbled himself to be shepherded by the Holy Ghost. Everybody says shepherd, shepherd by, the by the Holy Ghost. Jesus is letting you know, everybody's running and, and they're checking all their test messages, checking all their Facebook, seeing how many people like them on Facebook. And Jesus is like, no, I don't got time for this. I'm going to take time to be still in the mornings. I'm going to take time to talk to the Father on this mountain because these people are crazy. And I'd be set up here in this mountain for about two hours because they're crazy. And when he gets done talking to God, he gets down off that mountain. What's he, you see him doing? He's just walking. Praise and what happens is, what stops him when he sees a need? You remember that imagery that happened when he was walking? Mine has been just walking in the crowd. And the woman's crawling on the ground. And she says, if I would just touch the hem of his garment, if I just touch the hem of his garment, if I just touch the hem, that's what she was saying to herself. If I just touch the hem, and she got to crawl, if I just touch the hem of his garment, as soon as she touched his garment, he said, the master stopped walking. He's like, I sense that someone has touched the path Praise of righteousness. Him. Praise him. And her path came in the form of healing because she didn't have any kind of strength in her body to walk Praise anymore. Him. All she had the strength was to crawl. And because she crawled in faith, my path of right standing with God touched her body and made her whole. Praise Give God a praise. And he kept, and then he kept in this room. He kept walking. And suddenly, someone said, Master, I have a daughter who's dying. Help me. He walked toward that person. 
But this woman with the issue of blood stopped that process because he took time to minister to her. Suddenly, he heard word that don't worry about going to the daughter anymore. She's dead. Look at the shepherd. He's not moved at all. He said, take me to the house. So he, he's walking. Now you would think if you hear news like this, you'd be running. He's telling you, even when the devil does the greatest error ever, you still keep walking because he's going to lead you, the Bible says, in the valley of the shadow of death. Everybody says the valley, the valley. of the shadow of death. Shadow this is a very interesting image. Valley is it's a big, deep hole. It's like dips. And what happens is it's not death. It's only the shadow of death. This is revelation. The devil is going to talk to you and say, this is going to die. This one's going to die. But God, the shepherd, says, no, death has not yet come. It's only death's shadow. Death wants you to be scared because she's casting her shadow upon your situation. But I want to let you know that I'm going to cause death to stand back to where she can't hit you. You'll only see her shadow because the shepherd is in you. You understand what you're telling me? People are outside the covenant. If death comes on, it's not the shadow. It's death herself. But because you have the shepherd that you're following, the shepherd's like, no, I'm going to hold death back with one hand. That's Praise the kind the of God Lord. you have. Praise not two hands. Matter of fact, my pinky. Praise hold death with my pinky. And all you're going to see is the shadow cast. It looks bad, but it's yeah. not death. It's just the shadow. And it says, and then you say, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. And this is a very fascinating imagery. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Yes. There's a revelation there I never heard of till this morning. I was reading about this. Rod and staff are authoritative terms. Y'all ready to hear this? Y'all get blessed. Because I got blessed. Rod and staff are sometimes used interchangeably. Did you know a rod and staff is used to beat something in submission? It is used to correct something in submission. Now, do you remember the Bible says that whom the Lord loves, he'll chastise? So what happens is this same rod and staff will comfort you because you are humble enough to be corrected. But that same rod and staff is used as the sword of the spirit well, and will defeat the enemy well, around you. Oh, praise God. So you might ask yourself, what is this rod of staff you're talking about, Chris? It is nothing more than the anointing of God, you, the Jesus. word of God. Thank when the you. word of God is used correctly, it will not hurt you. It says it will it's cut you quicker than a two-edged sword, the Bible says. It goes right through the bone and through the spirit. So to you, when the word comes to you as a covenant keeper, the Bible says he sent his word to heal you. But that same word is a weapon against the enemy. Who is this enemy that I'm speaking of? It's not people. It is nothing more than Satan and his demonic hordes. Uh -huh. So when cancer comes, when sickness and disease come, when whatever kind of situation comes, the devil tries to attack. When he tries to attack different family members, different siblings, different children, it will not harm them Praise long term the because the word of God Praise is your rod and staff. Amen. So then in the coming days when you hear the devil speak and tell you, here's what I desire to do to your children. This is what I desire to do to you. Fear not, because his rod and his staff is forever present to comfort you. Praise the Lord. And look what it says. God is so cool about it. This makes no sense. The Bible says, God's still walking. The shepherd's walking. Where are we going, Jesus? Be still. Be still and know that I'm God. I'm God all by myself. Be quiet, Chris. Shh, 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 shh. Be quiet. Now, where we go? Because you know I'm the Holy Ghost Junior. Where we go? We gotta make decisions. We gotta do this. this. Shh. Stop trying to come up with plans. Just shh. Be quiet. Walk. Where we go? My mask. See the waters, Chris? I see the waters. Beautiful. What was what's going on? Shh. And when I get the revelation, be quiet, Chris. The master's up to something. We start walking past the water. And I'm like, oh, it's getting dark. Jesus, what's this? The valley. Shh. It's not the mountain of death. This is the valley. You hear the revelation? Uh -huh. You're not going to the mountain of death, Chris. We're going to the valley. Valley means you're going down. He said, well, but, but it's okay. 
Fear not, I'm with you. And then we finally get to this weird place when we get through the valley. I'm like, Jesus, what are you doing now? Oh, it's dinner time. Well, it's time to set up a table. Well, I'm like, what are you doing? This? And all these people coming against me, and all my enemies, shh, they're invited to the party. What party? He's just preparing the tables, Chris. And we we'll go back by my pastor to get some beef and potatoes. Well, get some cornbread and get some dressing. Well. And sit down, Chris. What you do? Shh. See that enemy that wants backstab you, talk about you, wants your position, and wants your wife, they're invited to the table. What? Shh, 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 shh. And then what he does is he says, Come here, Chris. What are we doing now? Bow down. He bows down and he anoints my head with oil. Well. Oh, glory to God. Praise him. Praise him. Moms, God is about to prepare the table in the presence of trouble. In the presence of disaster, in the presence of what the devil had meant for evil, that's the very banquet hall God is going to avert. What I love about God is he lets the devil create a crisis. He lets the devil think he won. And God's in heaven laughing. He's like, now, since you created this beautiful, terrible disaster, I'm going to convert it into something beautiful, into a banquet hall. All the people you have come against you, I'm inviting them to your party. And guess who's paying for it? Your enemies. Praise the Lord. They'll praise God. I will anoint your head in the Lord. What that means is I will empower you with power to do those things you thought you could never do. And it runs over. What's it running over? I want you to bless the very people I invited to the table. What? You want me to pray for my enemy? That's right, Chris, because even if they don't receive it, guess where it's going back to? Praise the Lord. He wants you to have a lifestyle of giving. The whole reason why we're even here is he wants moms and dads to be a reflection of the glory of God. To where people get converted in spite of themselves. That you're still being good to them. That you're still serving God. That you're still not trusting anyone but God alone. And when the cup runs over, suddenly goodness and mercy follows you. Yeah. See, when God anoints you, goodness and mercy. Everybody say mercy. Mercy. This is favor. What is favor? You don't deserve it. God just decided, I'm going to be good to you. Yeah. And what I love about this is this goodness and mercy that overflows out of you is so powerful, it goes to all your children. Amen. You think about Noah. The Bible says God found grace. No, Noah found grace in the eyes of God. That means Noah found favor in the eyes of God. He was the only man on the whole planet that served God. Not his wife, not his kids, uh -huh. not his daughters-in-law, just Noah. Uh -huh. And God decided to anoint his head with oil. How did he anoint his head with oil? He gave him a strategy. Everybody say a strategy. A strategy. When God anoints your head, listen, that's the oh, thank you, Jesus, a revelation. God will anoint, empower your mind to come up with strategies to get you out of the situation you're in. I was telling mom the other night, all the word of God really is, is that God whispers the technology of heaven to you. God has given the technology of the ancients. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise God. He's giving the technology of the heavenlies that only angels know. Some secrets that only God knows. Amen. And he's given it to the covenant keepers. Praise the Lord. You ask, what do you mean? That's so deep. No, it is deep. People are trying to find cures of cancer, but he already has the cure. People are looking for cures of how to get out of debt. He already has the cure. Praise there are the certain Lord. family members we're praying for that nobody can reach, but he knows how to reach them. Praise the Lord. There's someone right now in the sound of my voice that God's about to spare their life because he has given the technology of heaven to you and the children of men. All you got to do is bow down and pray. And as you pray, the rod and the staff will go ahead of you and deliver your children wherever they praise are. The Lord. Praise oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. Be covered among us. God is with your children. Amen. He sees the secret things they haven't yet discussed with uh -huh. you. And he's going to beat them with the rod and staff. Praise Not to hurt them, but to comfort them. Uh -huh. And empower that mind of theirs to make right decisions. Uh -huh. When he anoints your head, he's clearing your emotions. Uh -huh. He's clearing your thought patterns. He's changing how you think, how you see things. Uh -huh. And let you see things and what they are and what they shall be. Uh -huh. And when he does that, 
Suddenly, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Say all the days all of day. your life. And listen to this part. Goodness and mercy is so powerful. It says, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What does that mean? Because I thought we we're going to die. Yes. You already hear this revelation? When you go into the covenant and you become a covenant keeping Christian, even when you die, guess what's still following you into the heavens? Goodness and mercy. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. Oh, God, the God that you serve is still your shepherd when you go to heaven. And I dare declare wherever you go, goodness and mercy is still following you. You may not feel like it does, but the devils are scared of you. They don't want you to realize that if he can ever get to that mind of yours to stop looking at the situations are going and no matter what the problems you're hearing, the shepherd saying, I have already been to the end of the story and it will end well. If you will just endure the valley, you will find out you will fear no evil because in that valley, I'm preparing a table. Notice the valley, they, notice the table didn't show up until you go in the valley. I dare declare to you that your next place of blessing is the valley. Because did not Paul say, death, where is your sting? Uh -huh. Where is your victory? Because the shepherd has took death away. And whatever you're going through, God will deliver you. Won't he do it? Give yes. God a praise. Amen. 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 And Father, in Jesus' name, I ask that you would anoint at the sound of my voice everyone's head with oil. That anoint simply means that you would soothe, massage the emotions, the mindsets of both Christians and non-Christians alike who are hearing the sound of my voice. And for those of you who don't know this great shepherd, just say, oh God, oh God. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I believe, I believe you sent Jesus. Jesus. He died for my sins. He, for he came back to life for me. Live in me. In Jesus' name. Jesus name. And Lord, I pray that you will deliver everyone that sound my voice through the valley that they're in. And that you will prepare a table in the presence of their enemies in that valley. In the name of Jesus.